total. <laughs> so I've seen this match up a couple of times. Oh, that's good. Yeah, starting out. Uh, oh, it looks like a, a good parry. Not being, uh, not being able to convert to stage control. Yeah, Zora's definitely doing a good job of not letting just Craig push him off stage and uh, get the edge guard. He's, he's definitely pushing back, throwing out his disjoints and uh, doing what he can to stay stay alive and stay on stage. Yeah, and I think once Octagon gets stage control, he really thrives on his edge guards. His edge guards are very dominant towards uh, any character with a questionable recovery. And, yeah, and, and right Kirk now... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. No, right now, uh, Octagon, here, here he is. He's got one. He's not go. able to convert properly. Oh, but he is going to take that first stop. Octagon just drops that rock as soon as he gets it. That's a really good tactic. You're going to want to bait him to think that, oh, you can you can take me off stage with the rock and, and just destroy me. But nope, I threw it. It's gone. I don't have to worry about it. Right. Sylvanas really takes advantage of that just to, to take care of rock. And he can also take care of uh, Pillar while uh, Crack standing on it. Oh yeah, that's, that's that's definitely the name of the game for most edge guards when it comes to Sylvanas. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, good pressure. Ooh, and that rock actually taking out the flower too. He's that no little bounce. Yeah, see, it's really oppressive edge guard here. Already at 136. Ooh, but he's able to sneak his way back on stage. Ooh, Ooh good parry. Ooh, and extra damage right there. Parries are definitely going to be the determining factor if Sylvanas wins, in my opinion. Because he can get ridiculous punishes off of parries. Right. And that's why he's going to need to take the stocks. Because otherwise, a Craig in advantage state is a tough opponent for Sylvanas. Keeping the air dodge, using it to mix up his recovery. That's smart from Dora. Octagon playing really well with these rock throws. He's got the angles down. I mean, there's only so many angles Sylvana can go at this point. He either goes straight or he goes in an arc. So, and that that's perfect for uh, for Octagon, if anything, because he's got the uh, the neutral rock throw, which kind of does a little arc and is slow, and then he's got the fast one, which goes straight ahead to take care of his forward approaches. So, yeah. Oh, he's able to sneak through that uh, pillar right there. That was interesting. Yeah. Oh, using the below hitbox of the down beat. Yeah. Wow, this rock play is super good for Octagon right now. Yeah, he's Ooh. almost wobbling him. <laughs> yeah. Octagon 149, and Zora's kind of struggling to close out the stock. Oh, uh, that ah, was a really nice, nice edge guard right there. You Going all the way out there. You cannot be afraid to go down there to Sylvanas because you know you have the recovery advantage. So whether whether he dies or, or you die, it doesn't matter. You got to go down there and you got to break that pillar. You got to get the edge guard. Oh wow, and that lingering hitbox right there gonna take the game. Yep, he knew. Uh, the tough thing about Sylvanas is that when you're recovering, you tend to hold in most of the time because you want to stall your recovery as much as possible. Right. But if that's the case, then more than likely you're gonna be coming out of the ground near the edge of the stage rather than away. So. Right. And here we see a switch to Forsburn. Oh, all right. Matchup I'm familiar with. Good, good. We got the yeah. Forsburn main here. Yeah. Opening up with uh, some back airs. Definitely a Forsburn's best uh, tool for gaining stage control rather than down air. Yep. Puts him in a good position to start up combos with dash attack or forward air. Oh, good. good parry. There. He's using down air. Oh, that's smooth. Wow. Going all the way out there, and you can't, you can't be afraid to go out. Using the clone to break the rock, that's so big for him, yo. Yeah. I feel like uh, Frost Forsburn is definitely going to have a bit of a better uh, you know, time comboing after getting the parries, which uh, Zora's been really good at getting recently. Right. So it's definitely going to put him in an advantage state once uh, he gets the parry. So we got Octagon just trying to just find his way through all these uh, aerials and clones to uh, hopefully start something up. That random must smash. Oh, wow. Good it, patience it waiting for that roll there. Oh, crowd off stage with Rock. Throws it, gets a pillar out, but that combust is going to steal the stock. Good jump. waiting for that edge guard. Uh, that the air dodge. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good tomahawk landing there. I don't think I've seen a crag wow. main who doesn't try to parry when they're on the pillar below the stage, so... Right, that that's was a really, really good tactic. Oh, that that was a oh. very questionable recovery there. I think he wanted a neutral special, but he got an up special. That's he it. just decided to, to wing it with the straight up. Sorry, buddy, but double up is a different patch. Sure. There we go, just uh, putting clone pressure on the uh, uh, for off stage. Not really going out there. He's really leaving his clones in really good spots, honestly. 
Uh, the, the getting the top platform calls out the jump, it calls out the air dodge, the, the side B from Krag, and he's just waiting down below to uh, catch whatever laggy landing he chooses. Right. And I love this use of Bless Reverse. That's what SBS calls it, is uh, using uh, Force Burn's down special mm -hmm. to reverse uh, which direction he's facing. So now we're here at a game three. Uh, wonderful play from Zora. Uh, that counter pick definitely helped them out a lot. Uh, Force Burn is looking much more dominant in this matchup. Yeah, Octagon's definitely gonna have to uh, mix up his recovery in this matchup because he's getting called out by the by the back airs, by the clones and everything. So I think he needs to uh, pull out rock a bit more on pillar in order to mix up his recoveries because he can break the rock, he can throw it up and kind of put out a hitbox while he air dodges into the stage. Right, uh, it's he can also uh, throw, throw out some shards uh, towards Force Burn. Uh, in hopes that he doesn't parry it, of course. Yeah, and that will take care of his clone, too, which seems to be a lot of the ways that he's getting uh, hit back on stage. Right. Yeah, having clone out for edge guarding is definitely a super, super good tool, uh, especially for those low recoveries. Once you have Crag below you as Forsburn, you technically have a free stock right there. Because Forsburn should not uh, should not have to drop that edge guard. Oh, definitely uh, If not. you were to try to break, cancel, down, smash the rock, Forsburn can just parry, or any character, really. And uh, you get rid of the pillar, and now they're they're off stage with a few resources. Right, going to Tower of Heaven, uh, really good stage for both characters. Honestly, I don't see a real disadvantage for either character. Ooh, getting the four airs to start off, gain some damage. Yep, there we go. We got Octagon using the shards again to try to uh, mitigate some of the stage control that Zora has. Zora trying to keep his back turned towards Crag because back air and down air spike are super good for either comboing or just getting stage control because you don't want to rely on down air too much. Yeah, that's definitely true. It's a very, very predictable to parry. And that's why I was thinking Octagon's going to be picking up on is uh, Zora throwing out those high aerials trying to get like a combo started. And uh, I haven't seen very many parries from Octagon, honestly. I, I think he's a bit too uh, scared of the uh, really, really fast aerials that Frostbush are throwing out. Right. You give him a moment to pause and he just takes your whole dang stop. There, he took, uh, he took out Clone with a rock, which is very good. So you can see where the actual force win was. Oh, and that down air is going to cover his air dodge. That was some tough DI right there. Alright, we got even stocks now. Yeah. Ooh, calling out a stall right there. Not many people do that. They just like to call out force win stalls rather than letting him do it. So instead of waiting for him to land, you kind of just jump up there and just challenge him right away. Right. Because now he's stuck in a stalling option, whether that be air dodging or spawning a clone. You can interrupt that, no problem. Ooh, he was about to use a rock edge guard, but clone teleported right into him. Man, and that up is so good for disrupting people who are waiting for you on the edge. Right, and especially if they know which one is you. Oh, and these texts on the rock. Ooh, wow. Ooh, the up air. Ridiculous. Nice. Wow, what an amazing conversion. Zori definitely has a chance to make this even though with Craig at 134. He just needs the right kind of edge guard. Yeah. He's to find his way through the down bees and the rock, but uh, uh, it seems he's getting oh overwhelmed. Oh my goodness. He's rocks. Yeah. Octagon definitely a uh, very experienced rock user. He's been using every single angle. He's been uh, using his down B to break it from the shards. Yeah. Good. Right there breaking his, uh, his pillar, so. Oh, well, it took his air dodge. Really Oh, and that's yeah. gonna take it. Wow. Yeah. And a pop-up right. from Octagon. Well deserved win. Definitely, Absolutely. definitely. Zora uh bring out Silvanos game one. That he he knew that, that was a uh, that was a tough option for him.